Oh, let me just hit that one. Okay, we're good. <laughs> How are you guys tonight? My bad. Yeah, you guys are live here on the Dixieville Paint Facebook and Instagram page. My name is Brandy. I am with Brush by Brandy, and I'm a Dixieville Paint brand ambassador. And we paint together live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. So you guys are live here right now. My husband, Sean, is here behind the camera to help answer any questions that you guys have along the way. So feel free to pop on and ask any questions that you guys have. Or hit the camera. Yeah, hit yeah. the camera, turn no it off, deal. scroll to another page, whatever Frisbee you want to do. Yeah. Um, it can be about this project that I'm working on or anything else that you guys have that you're working on, too. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We're going to paint tonight. What is this, a psych line? Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. other problem you may it have, feel you, free. It costs you three ninety nine for the first minute. Oh, and, it's uh, cheaper for fortune telling. Nine ninety nine each additional minute that you're watching this live. But carry on. <laughs> um, so you guys, before I get started, really quick, um, I missed my live last week, and you guys have been so thoughtful to check in with me all week long. I missed my live last week because we found out that our cat was in liver failure. This is my son's cat. And we went to the vet and they told us he would need to be put down. And so we had an appointment last week for him to be put down. But I thought that you guys would like to see that he is still here with us. We are nursing him back to health. It is a rough and rocky road. He gets uh, uh, IV fluids every day and two types of medications. We are nursing him out of liver failure, but he looks great. He looks a million times better than he did a week ago. So this is your update on our cat. His name is Chung, by the way, Chungy. We call him Chunky because he was a chunky cat. He's lost a lot of weight through this, but he's back eating and he's taken his IV really well. So that is your update on my kitty. And thank you to everyone who's checked in. And I'm sorry we missed you guys last week and couldn't be here with you, but we're back to paint. So everyone say goodbye to Chungy. Uh -huh. and, <laughs> and I'm gonna pass him off to my son so we can paint tonight. All right. Thank you. So this piece that I'm gonna work on here, um, I actually posted on my page this week a coffee table that I did for the same customer. It's gonna go in the same room. So our inspiration for this piece is coming from the Boho Soul Transfer. We're gonna use the Boho Soul Transfer. And let me show you the pieces of the transfer that are gonna be going on this piece. And so you can have that in the back of your head as we go through and paint this. We're gonna be using these feathers and flowers that are on here. So it's got the soft teals in the leaves, um, I think this is going to coordinate really pretty. I'll kind of, you know, pick some ways that I can connect these together and make a larger design. But that's the direction that we're going. Our inspiration's coming from the Boho Soul Transfer. Um, and let me show you the color that we're going to be using. So we're going to blend a custom mix. This is my mix. You guys have seen this. It's a custom mix teal color. It's really, really pretty. Okay, so it's nice and deep and rich. Here's the thing. I have this much left of the exact color that I used on her coffee table. I'm going to mix a second version with you guys tonight. That's going to be pretty close as my base coat. And then I'm going to use this exact color as my second coat. Because I know if I try to remix this, if it's a slight shade off, only because she's got another piece of furniture already in the room, I want this to be my second coat. So I'm going to put this aside and let's go ahead and mix the one that we're going to use tonight and i'm going to show oh, you boy. guys the colors that are in this we're going to just get as close as possible it's a base coat so as long as it's fairly close you won't notice it. it's going to get covered by my exact mixture i'm just glad you're doing it if it was me it'd turn up like purple yeah we're, we're just going to get close enough tonight yeah, yeah. so i save all my dixie bell paint containers that are semi-usable if they're if they're way too destroyed i just throw them out but um, i save the ones that are usable so that i can make custom mixes in what? So this is a custom mix of roughly 50-50 antebellum blue. So Thank you, Deborah. I'm just going to start pouring, you guys, and I'm going to get as close as I can, and I can make corrections along the way. So that's my antebellum blue, and let's put in some palmetto. <laughs> well, trying, opened, yeah. trying to not spill the other mm -hmm. one. Why? Uh, uh, uh. All right, this is palmetto, which is a super rich green, so we're going to... Uh, Antebellum Blue already has green undertones, but we're going to make it even more green. That's how I roll. That's how I mix, guys. This is why I can't ever tell you the exact formulation because I mix like this. It's approximately yeah. <laughs> you want anywhere dump... between 1 to 99% one color. You want to dump a little bit of paint in there. And then I'm going to stir these together. Okay, so it's a, that's about a 50-50 mixture of those two colors, Antebellum Blue and Palmetto. And then I'm going to add Midnight Sky to darken it. So the Midnight Sky is not 
um, equal parts. It's just enough to darken this. Now I get this rich teal color. It's a greener version of antebellum blue. It's antebellum green. Oh, man. <laughs> oh it never gets old, right? Um, no, it does. <laughs> now I'm going to take some uh, Midnight Sky and I'm going to darken this mixture. And then I'll look at it against my original version and see if I got anywhere in the near right direction. Okay, so I would say this is probably about half as much Midnight Sky as I used of the Antebellum Blue and Palmetto. So yes, just to re recap, the cat's doing much better. He is. We just showed him, you guys. So if you didn't catch him, you can see him on the replay. He just made his camera debut. He is a very shy cat. He likes his privacy. He's not a celebrity cat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he would be terrible. Not like Toonsis? He's not, yeah, he's not <laughs> Toonsis, the driving cat. My kids have watched SNL clips. Can you tell? Saturday Night Live. All right, now I'm going to surprise myself and open this other version. It's and so see weird. If I We're not going to make a video on parenting tips. Uh, my my um, my original mixture is darker, so that just means I need more midnight sky. It, I might end up being about equal parts of the midnight sky. Looking at it, I'm probably equal parts of all three colors, pretty close at least. Like I said, if I'm a shade off, I'm okay with that because I'm going to save my original mixture and that's going to be my final color. But we'll just use this to blend with tonight. And then I'll have extra of this mix because I'm going to use I'm going to use the uh, original mix in its entirety. Oh, it doesn't matter. You're going to use it. I'm a little bit off. Uh, this is probably more green. Uh, wrong direction. One direction? Wrong what? direction. It's the name of my boy band. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely the wrong direction. <laughs> if you thought you should start a boy band, you're going in the wrong direction. All right, we're gonna call this good and let's start blending with it. So here is my color. It's it's super deep and rich. Um, it's darker than antebellum blue, a little more green than antebellum blue. All right, let's put some lids on all my paint colors. So that was three colors, antebellum blue, Midnight Sky and Palmetto. So when you guys see me post, when I make the post for this, it will say a mixture of those three colors, but then I'm gonna blend that mix with another color. So the other color is gonna come in, but it's not actually getting dumped into the pot. And what I'm gonna use is dried sage. Um, I'm using dried sage because it has a little bit of a green undertone. Um, it's going to blend really well with my custom mix just to add a highlight. You're not even going to know that it has dried sage in it. You won't even really see this color. It's just a little bit lighter than my mix. Um, just to give me a little bit of a highlight. If you don't have dried sage, I think anything in this color range would work for the highlight. This is French linen. That would work. Um, sandbar would work. Driftwood, anything in that range that's not a pure white. I don't ever like to blend with pure white. It's very challenging to do. Susan says she received her jewelry box today. Oh, did and you, she, Susan? She loves them. Hey, I shipped two out on the same day, the Boho Soul. You have actually some of these same flowers on that jewelry box, Susan. I shipped two out on the same day. They both arrived today. That's pretty cool. Um, huh. Okay. Watching from Kuwait. Wow. Huh. Awesome. That is so cool. Social media is amazing. Okay, let me tell you guys where uh, we are on this buffet. Uh, it's mahogany. So right off the bat, you don't even have to ask me. I know for sure it's going to be She's a bleeder. She's a bleeder. Yep, here's the giveaway. Pretty much anything that's got this style hardware, it's a bleeder. Unless it's a modern piece with this hardware that's a reproduction. Yeah. If it's vintage and it's got this hardware on it, you better get some boss to go with your piece. So I cleaned this really well. Um, and I've got two coats of boss on here that has dried overnight. So that's what you see. That's this gray. This is Dixie Belle Boss in gray, which is my favorite of the boss. I choose it anytime I can. Um, and then the other thing I'm going to point out before I get started is I'm going to show you guys something tonight. And I'm going to use, uh, these are the Dixie Belle Flat Medium and the Flat Large. Oh, you're going to juggle. Yeah. Do, 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 do. No. <laughs> poke it up, poke it up. Okay, I'm going to use the flat medium and flat large tonight, and I wanted to show you guys because I usually use the Dixie Belle Mini. These are pretty similar. 
I like the flat brushes. The difference is really in the handle. I like the handle of the mini better, but these are available on the website right now. And that's why I wanted to use these so I, I can show you guys that I think they serve a pretty similar purpose um, for laying paint on. The difference is really in the handle. So if you don't care about the handle, these are available right now on the website. And the Dixie Bell brushes have been in short stock because of COVID. So you can get these. Yeah, I really wish you'd get out of the way. Sorry, I know I'm gonna move this direction. So, oh, fine. okay, so this is my custom mix I just made. I'm brushing it on in roughly where I think I wanna start my base coat. I'm gonna keep this nice and wet. We've got a fan on in the background. It's warm, it's, we're in the 90s. Supposed to get into 100 degree weather this weekend in California. I know my paint's gonna dry pretty quickly. I'm gonna keep it wet. I use a lot of water when I paint with Dixie Belle. It's a water-based paint, so it's very friendly to water. Helps me get a smooth, even finish. Um, I like to, I usually mist my surface. You can also mist your brush if you prefer. And the basic framework I think I'm going for is I think I'm going to put a highlight in the center of here, kind of going over the drawer. I prefer to do a larger area versus trying to get it in this skinny, narrow spot right here. I think it ends up looking kind of like a stripe sometimes. I want it to look a little bit more natural, so I'm going to put my highlight color, which is my lighter color, in the center of this door is what I'm thinking. So I'm using the flat large right now, and I'm just using it to brush my paint on. It's got this long handle in it, but I kind of sit it. It's got a little groove right here, and that kind of sits in this little nook of my thumb. And then I can hold it down here, kind of like I hold the mini, which has the shorter handle. So this is my base coat, right? This is where I get to play with my design. Do I like this color layout? I can make any changes that I want to because this is just a base. Now, as far as water, it doesn't matter what kind of water. No, um, I know to some people it does. I've seen people say they use distilled water or, you know, that may be an individual thing. I personally live on a wet, we have a well, we live on five acres, we have a well, and our water is filtered. So my water is actually beautifully clean. But if you have really hard water or live in a city and you know that you have a lot of chemicals in your water, I've seen people that do make that decision based on their individual water. So I have to leave that up to you guys. But, um, but I just use it, it's from my tap. Oh, Gary wants us to send some of the heat his way. Are you they guys have old, a freeze Gary? warning. Oh my well, gosh. I think we kind of pay for the heat. What? Yeah, because here's the deal. It's Memorial Day weekend this weekend. Happy Memorial Day, you guys. Thank you, everyone, for your service. Happy Memorial Day. I, I don't even like saying Happy Memorial Day, but I hope you guys enjoy your Memorial Day and have a thoughtful Memorial Day, um, taking time to remember any of your loved ones. Um, we are hoping to take the kids out kayaking because our lake is actually closed. We don't have enough water in our lakes to put a boat on it, so we can't boat this summer at all. It's already determined, even before the summer even begins, that there won't be enough water in the lake. Oh, my son's sitting out here and he just heard me say that. <laughs> so, Brandy's no good at keeping a secret from her kids. Oh yeah, Erin, my skin looks so much better with the filtered water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shana's, if only it would make hair grow back. Sean is beautiful and svelte right now. You can't even see it. That's just normal. I mean, I can't even see it. I'm sitting in the room. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, this is my dried sage, and you guys are thinking I'm crazy right about now, right? I'm going to work this dried sage in to where you don't even see it. Another option would be you can actually mix a little bit of your dried sage in a bowl and tint it with this green color, greenish teal color. So it's not, because I'm going to basically mix it on my furniture piece. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to keep it really wet. Nothing's dry in here. Don't even think about it. I'm going to go over it with my original brush and see how it just creates this lighter color in the center. That's how I'm going to do it. But you could also mix this color in a bowl if you were more comfortable doing it that way. So Sean says it's going down to 42 tonight what? in Canada. Could be worse. It could be going up to 42. How is that? Yeah, that's true. How's that even possible? That's a crazy difference. That always blows my mind. All right, this looks terrible, right, you guys? 
I'm going to show you guys something. Again, keeping my paint wet, it's not drying because I want to be able to play with it. I'm going to show you guys a blend with the besting brush. And I feel like this besting brush is a good method for people who struggle with blending. That's why I want to incorporate it. So what I would do from here is I could take my besting brush and I would go, whoops, I'm getting. Okay, Brittany, let's not get too formal. And did I catch Leah's live last week? Her husband was saying everybody's name, first and last name. Oh, well. Yeah. I don't like to be so formal. No, where were we last week? Oh, that was the issue with the chunk. Oh, yeah. I know, but I'm trying to think of where I was during Leah's live because I didn't catch her. Why didn't I catch her? Okay, so what I would do if, if you struggle with blending, I think the best Jane brush is a good tool to have in your toolbox because then I'm just going to swirl it around where these two colors meet up and I can, I'm pulling them into each other with the swirling motion. You can see I'm pro pulling the teal into the dried sage and the dried sage into the teal and that's how I get them to overlap right here. So if you struggle with this, I feel like the, the best thing brush blending is, is kind of a easier method. Keep in mind, this is my base coat. I don't have very good coverage. It's going to need a second coat. I'm getting rid of some of the swirl marks just so I can see where I am right now. But I can see I've got a lighter spot in the middle there. Got a couple brush hairs I'm gonna get out. It is very normal for natural bristle brushes to lose their bristles. Bristles? Thanks, Gary. Correction. What? It was Leah's daughter. Oh, it was her daughter. It's easy to mix up Leah's daughter and her husband. I understand that. That was me. I go okay. by name. And then I'm going to darken up my edges with some of my teal again. So I have those nice and dark. And you can kind of see how I end up with my um, highlight in the center. Yeah, my paint is drying really fast. I probably should not have tried to tackle this entire center space with a fan all at going. once with the fan going. Let me turn the fan down. Uh, I don't know if it's going to help because I think it's just the air temperature too. Even where I'm putting my water, it's drying really fast. I have a mister. No, you're not going to spray my piece with a mister bottle. <laughs> with a garden hose. Yeah, let me get the garden hose. So even where I'm putting the water, it's drying the mist droplets faster than I can get to them. So my suggestion for that is, um, is work smaller areas. I could work just these two drawers, and that's what I should have done. And then I could come back and do these bottom two, but I tried to bite it all off at one time and it's causing my paint dry to, to dry way faster than I can even keep up with. And I'm happy to come back and do a touch up to clean it up. So that would be my suggestion. Once you, once you mist with the water and then you brush over it, you can see uh, it will expose all those mist droplets. If you leave it alone, they'll evaporate. But once you brush over them, you've got to fix it. All right. So I'm not super thrilled with this. It doesn't look great. It's smooth. That's all I could hope for right now. And my second coat will give me the coverage. And then I can come back and perfect this. But I'm going to come do this bottom section again, too. Getting it super wet because my paint has never dried, you guys. It's still in play. I can sit and play with this paint just by re-wetting it. I take it back to stage one again. That's basically what I'm doing is taking it back to my stage one. And then my paint is moist again. So when I brush through it, I'm not going to get those drag marks in my paint. As long as I keep it wet, I can keep playing with the paint. So you're basically going to come back and fix this with your second. Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, gosh, yes. This is just my base coat. And then what do you have for plans on the inside of the cabinet? So right now I'll, I'll open one of these doors and show you guys what I usually do to the inside of my cabinets. I just want to get my rough layout on here though. <laughs> Sheila, it's a fan. Yes, I'm breathing heavy. <laughs> the... I, I'm the mouth breather in the family, not John. <laughs> All 
All right, so I'm just freshening this up, re-wetting my paint. Okay, so let's talk about the inside. This looks terrible, but that's okay. Most of my pieces go through a spot where they look absolutely atrocious, and I just have to trust that they're gonna come out in the end. This might dry enough while we're on camera for me to come back and fix this center portion. Sheila said she thought it sounded like her last date. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Sheila, did you let Getting that... a lot of good phone calls out of that one. Did you let that one go? I hope did, not. He's did like... you get any cryptic letters beforehand? He sounds like a keeper. Cryptic letters cut out from like magazine pages. Yes. <laughs> All right, the other thing I want to do on this piece is I didn't do this very bottom portion because I want to make that darker. So I'm going to take just my pure midnight sky and I'm going to do this little bottom section down here and just midnight sky. And I'm going to carry that up a little bit in the corner so it's a little bit darker as I come up and down here at the very bottom. So I'm just brushing over my original paint with my midnight sky. That's going to cause those two colors to kind of work together on my piece. And then I'll bring it up a little bit, kind of like a U shape across the bottom. This corner over here is hard for me to reach. The other thing I hate is I have to take the latches off the doors and then it causes the doors to move around. Someone's at the door for you. No, come in. It's probably FedEx. I just got my Dixie Bell order today. And it has brushes in it. New brushes. Hallelujah, you what? guys. My brushes are getting so sad right now. Okay, so I like that. I, I can really see the concept of it where I've got my darker base. I've got my teal color with a nice pretty highlight in the middle. Looks terrible but that's what this coat is for it's to help me think through what my layout's going to look like what my basic look is i'm going to let this dry a little bit to see if i can't come back and work a second coat on it while we're still on camera is this when you ask me my opinion and i have nope. to lie i nope, mean nope. i yeah. don't care yeah i mean i i don't lie about it okay so let's talk someone asked about the inside of the cabinet what do i do to the inside of my cabinets let me show you guys I do the inside of the door. I like it. I think it looks pretty when you open the door. I will cut in right here. There's a line uh, where the shelf starts. That will be painted and I'll paint this line here. I will oil this wood inside with Big Mama's Butter. You can paint it, but if there's nothing wrong with it, cabinets made of wood are made of wood because that's the best material they could be. If I've got drawers that are in beautiful condition, they're wood inside, there's no markings on it. It's clean. These are nice drawer boxes. I will sand away anything like this. I don't know what this mark is, but I do this last. I do the inside of my piece last because I might get dust in it from sanding. There's no point in working my drawers until last, and then I'll clean it all up. Um, it's kind of like you build your house first, and then you have someone come through and do a final cleanup before you move in. That's kind of what I do. So I'll sand this. So it's clean and smooth and then I oil it with Big Mama's Butter and I oil my wood glides and it smells beautiful and it looks clean and soft and smooth so I do all that last. All right let's do the same thing over here. Find my right brush and I'm thinking I'm going to repeat the kind of the same layout that I've got in the center only in a smaller scale over here. And it's okay if there was a little bit of a spot missed you come back around on first coat on the first coat oh gosh yes i don't have even coverage at all i can see tons of my boss coming through oh down there yeah. so what i'm going to need to do you guys is i need to put this up on rollers because if i paint down too low i have a, a rug under me that i use as a drop cloth it will it will brush onto the furs of the rug and i get then i get little fibers in my brush so i deliberately do not go too close to the rug with my brush unless i've got rollers underneath my piece so this one's going to need to go up on rollers for me to get that bottom section, but it's also a solid color. So it's really easy for me to just paint this bottom section in the midnight sky and, um, and I can fix that. So really all I do when I'm doing this coat is I just want to get my colors laid out, get it figured out what I'm trying to do. Uh, I get it straight in my head 
And then my next toe is when I will really come back and work the technique to perfection. I try to keep this coat nice and smooth so at least I don't want to have brush strokes all through it. It's still the base for my final coat of paint. I don't want to have paint gathered up in corners. You know, I keep along the moldings nice and clean. I will take all the drawers out and paint inside the drawers, but right now I'm just trying to lay out my basic color layout. So obviously I did not put rollers on this piece well, to elevate it. No. because So what do you do? Here's why. Uh, I just got this out yesterday, you guys, and knowing that I had a live today, I finished two pieces this week already. It's only Thursday, by the way. So I've been painting like crazy, and then I was like, I need something for my live. Can you get this piece out for me? And I put I put Boss on it yesterday. Um, She's very demanding. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm super busy right now. And so it's a... It's not Sean's fault. It's it's for like, we can't move fast enough right now. So it just gets lifted up onto the rollers. They're sitting across the room. I can see them. I've got one, two, three, four, five pieces in here right now. What do I do with my brush? Okay, so same thing I did before where I'm going to brush over this and I'm going to create this mix on my piece. If you don't want to create the mix on your piece, mix them in a little bowl, tint your dried sage to a darker color. It's not going to look anything like dried sage by the time I'm done with it. Really quick, just to go back to rollers, where do you get them? I uh, have them in my Amazon shop, you guys. They're three-wheel dollies. Um, my Amazon shop is pinned to the top of my Facebook page. It's the first post on my Facebook page is always pinned with all of my links, so they're super easy to find. You don't even have to scroll through anything. Go to Brush by Brandy on Facebook. First post on the page is all my links, has my Amazon shop in there. And in my Amazon shop, what the purpose of that is, I don't, you know, I don't literally stock things on Amazon and ship them to you, is I, I uh, add into a shop, uh, a storefront on Amazon, all my favorite things that I order from Amazon. It's not actually stuff I carry that I ship to you. It's my, all my favorite things that I would order. So if I order something, I obviously look for the best price and all that stuff. So I've already gone through and done that. And then I just put it in my Amazon shop stuff that I order. That's how that works. And then I earn a small percentage when people buy the same stuff as me through Amazon. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a cool concept. All right, I'm just darkening this up because I want it to kind of match, but you can kind of see what that dried sage does. It doesn't even look like dried sage anymore. It just becomes this lighter highlight that's going to be, and then I'll have this one, two, and there will be a third over there once I get to that. Charlotte says she saw the sneak peek for your YouTube tomorrow. Who did? Oh, 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 because I posted it on my page. I was like, where did, it's not public yet. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm going to get off my stool because I'm going to get down low. And sometimes I'm sitting up even just a little too high on that tiny stool. Which, by the way, because someone's going to ask, what is my stool? It is a mechanic stool with the post removed. That is my most asked question by far. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. And people are always like, I don't know if anyone's ever, ever asked you before. And I'm like, um, yep, every single day. <laughs> Without fail. <laughs> every single day. Um... Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, I, my YouTube video tomorrow. So what we did is me and Emily from Weathered Hearts. She paints with you guys live on Wednesday. And then Jody from Decorous Vintage. They're also Dixie Bell brand ambassadors. We got mystery boxes in the mail. Dixie Bell packs a box up of random supplies. And then we have to put together a finish with it. And so we did that. And that's my video that's coming out tomorrow. They sent me a box with the nautical transfer. And I think it actually turned out really cute. All right, so I like that. I can see where this is going to go, although it needs some help. Let me also point out I need to fill this spot right here. What I'm going to do with this here is I need to create a piece of this molding. I'm going to make a copy from this side using resin. And I've got a video on how to do that on my YouTube channel. So you can look up um, moldings or how to, make, how to reproduce moldings on my YouTube channel, and it'll 
show you how I've got to make a mold of this side, pour it in resin, and I'll glue it here. But that's still missing because I got this piece out last night. Now, as far as the kind of paint that's best for blending. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yes. Great question. I'm going to come to the other side of my piece and I'll work over there while we talk. Okay, um, obviously you guys can see what I'm doing here tonight. Oh, sorry, you gotta move too. <laughs> I'm using a lot of water. So, you need a water-based paint. You will not get the same, I know a lot of people like to make their own chalk paint from latex paint from the hardware store, you're not gonna get the same results. And then they message me and say, I can't, I can't get my blend right, what's going on? And I say, what paint are you using? Oh, I made it myself from latex paint. Nope, not going to be the same ever, 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 ever. The, the composition of, of it's different. Every paint formulation is different. You can't go and expect that, uh, you know, in, if you go to the hardware store, bare paint is the same formulation as glidden paint. It's not. They're very different. Same thing when you're looking at different types of furniture paint. Dixie Bell has their silk line, and then they have the chalk mineral line that I'm using tonight. The chalk mineral line blends far better. The formulation is different. It's friendly to water, which you need for blending. The silk line does not blend the same. It doesn't work the same with water. When you try to blend it, it sets up a little faster, gets a little sticky. You're gonna get frustrated trying to blend it. So your paint formulation definitely makes a difference. Um, and the Dixie Belle chalk mineral paint blends better than any I've tried. That's not an exaggeration. When I first started painting, I tried every brand out there before I was with Dixie Belle. I stuck with Dixie Belle because blending is my style and it blends really well. So it wasn't, it wasn't a hard choice. It's a paint that really works for my style. If this is a style you like and you want to duplicate, you got to have the right paint. They do not all blend the same. I promise you, you guys, I've tried them. There's a reason I use Dixie Belle. Um, I get the coverage. It doesn't separate with water. Separate meaning the paint comes apart. It doesn't, um, they all react differently. That's all I can say. I can't stress, I can't stress that enough because I get that question so often and it usually relates back to, nope, you're using a different paint. It doesn't act the same. Even if it's still chalk paint. Dixville's a chalk mineral paint, chalk paints, chalky style paints. They're not all created equal. Definitely not all created equal. So to interrupt you, when you're blending, you're blending and it's still wet. Yes. You I, do not blend it until it's dry. Uh, it's, it's not sopping wet. It's not sopping wet. You see me using my Mr. Bottle a lot, but it's not, um, sorry, I gotta get a brush over here. Um, The paint is, how can I explain this? It's still wet enough that I can move it. It's not sticky. I'm doing this to show you guys the movement of the paint, but it's not dripping either. So, so it's just. It's fresh. It's not, I don't know, maybe wet is the wrong word. It's fresh paint. Okay, because you can see I can still move the paint. It will start kind of setting up. And at that point, when it starts setting up is when I come back with my, with a clean dry brush and I'll just feather it out together. And that's when it's a little bit sticky. That's when I'm doing this. Can you mix chalk paint and silk paint? No, they're different formulations. They do not mix the same together. It would be like mixing, I don't know, margarine and butter. They look the same, right? They do the same stuff. You could bake with both of them. Nope, different formulations. It's not gonna mix right. Do you know the difference between those two? I, I do not. They're both, <laughs> they're both yellow. <laughs> yellow and yellow mix yellow. That's what I know. Um, you know it's yes, it's still fluid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The paint, not the, not oh. the margarine or the butter. It's yeah. still fluid. Yeah, it, it is. It's not it's super not dry, but I do let it get a little bit, it sets up a little bit, and that's when I come back with a clean, dry brush, and that's when you'll see me kind of feathering it out, is when it's a little bit set up, but it's still workable. So I think this is almost a dry brushing technique that kind of works the colors together once they're, once they're laid on is when that clean dry brush comes into play. That's when I'm feathering it out. So that's pretty sticky. Let's come back. I think I probably have like five more minutes I can work the center of this. I'm gonna just focus on these doors right here. That's pretty dry. I think dry. you just lack focus. 
Well, here's the deal. So I, I, hear just, I just put the paint on and, and the difference is going to be, I can't overwork this paint right now because if I do, I'm going to just start pulling the layer that I just put on because it hasn't dried enough. So dry time is very important when you're blending. I usually wait overnight in between my coats. All right, so I told you my second coat is going to be in this final mix. Kind of nervous to use it because if I have to do it again, I'm not going to have enough paint. All right, let's just use my let's just use my mix. All right, I'm going to work smaller areas this time since this is supposedly my second and final coat. I want it to actually be right. And I'm going to work it smaller areas so I can get it right. All right, this second coat is very little paint. I've got most of the coverage that I need. I just need to kind of perfect this. So I'm using probably more water than paint on my second coat. As long as I get my rough layout and my coverage is okay, then I just need to smooth this all out. So I laid on a little bit of my, that's dried sage, and I'm just going to work it in. This is my brush from my teal color. I'm calling it teal color because it's a mix of three colors. And I'm going to start just brushing straight through. So it kind of mixes on my piece. I don't want it to be definitively dried sage anymore. I want it to be a lighter color of my Just using water. I didn't add any paint to this brush, so the brush is becoming a, a brush for this third color that I'm making, which is somewhere in between dried sage and this teal. It's a lot of brush strokes. I get a nice soft effect. I have fixed my coverage issues, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to feather these two together with a clean dry brush. For this, I like to use the Dixieville Oval Medium. But I showed you guys in the beginning, you could also use your besting brush. I'm not going to use the besting brush here because it's too much friction uh, on this super fresh paint that I just put a base coat on in the last half an hour. I'm really, I'm really asking a lot of this paint right now. All right, I don't like this spot down here. That's what I'm seeing. I'm going to try to feather these together a little bit better. Just using a swirling motion to kind of pull them together. Soften out that blend. I like this area right here is really pretty, but I'm not happy with this down here. This is that clean dry brush. And all I do is I keep, I use my apron like a rag. You could have a separate rag. And then I just kind of feather out those swirl marks that I just created super soft light hand right now that's how you get this like really soft effect i've only done this door right here so don't pay attention to this side over here i've only done this door now i'm going to come back and i'm going to work my and i don't want to get too close to the rug so if i've got a line down there just ignore it that's a solid color so i can come back really easily and just it midnight sky okay so now I put midnight sky down here on the bottom I just brushed it into I've got fresh paint right here and I just brushed it in it just makes a lighter shade coming up the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing kind of coming up this side right here and just so it'll be just a darker in this corner right here so what colors did you mix together to get the teal? We mixed three colors. It's a mix of palmetto, antebellum blue, and midnight sky. And if you missed that part of it, you can watch this video once I'm off. It will be available on replay on the Dixie Bell page. And you can see I literally poured them together in one container and we mixed that color on camera. 
All right, so I just put my Midnight Sky in there. Now I'm gonna soften up this line to the teal. All right, and that's pretty. Just darkened up this corner right here. Okay, so I only was focusing on this door. This is just a first coat. Ignore this door over here. It looks horrible, so does this up here. So my second coat is where I'm just gonna come back and work those colors together until I get the soft effect that I really want. And I feel like I'm happy with this right here. All right, and then you can kind of see if I hold up my Boho Soul Transfer, you can see how those dark feathers. Sorry, Gary, I got the other one going too. The dark feathers all kind of weave into a, you know, I'll have to decide my exact layout. I'll probably cut these out and then I can um, tape them up and lay them out on my piece and the design that I want. And I'm going to kind of drape like a swag of the feathers and flowers. And I might even use more than one of these transfers. So when you start to blend, do you ever piece. have to use like a backup brush? Like your first one set down because it gets gummy? Oh my gosh, yes. All the time, you guys. All the time. Fully expect that. I always say one brush for each color plus a neutral brush. That's at the least. At the least. But here I am. I've got one, two, three colors. Let me show you. I've got six brushes going right now. I just get out a pile of brushes, a pile of brushes, and I don't always know how many I'm going to use. One might get a little muddy, and so I'll pull out a fresh one. Um, blending is also hard on your brushes because these are, have been sitting out now for a few minutes. I've got to go clean these. The paint starts to set up in them quickly. So my brushes get cleaned a lot, and they go through a lot of hard use. So I think that's something to be expected, too, if you're going to do... Um, do finishes like this so I know this doesn't look great you guys have to trust me I'm going to go through this second process here of refining the rest of this but I got my basic layout on here my coverage is good I'll do a light sanding and I'll come back and work the whole front of this piece I'm going to wait till it's not so hot and I what? don't have a fan on I tend to paint a lot at night and that's something to consider too your climate makes a difference you want your paint to be workable sometimes I'll just pick a different time to work it if it's too hot, it's too hot. There's nothing I can do about that. I just gotta pick a different time of the day to come work my paint, so. All right, I think this is gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna have a wood stain top on here. It's uh, in sad shape right now. I need to finish sanding this down, but again, I got this out last night, so. Um, so anyway. All right, you guys, I um, don't think I'll have this done anytime soon because my plan is to hopefully not paint this weekend. I wanna uh, spend some time with my family because I've already finished two pieces this week. Um, and I hope you guys do the same. Take the weekends off. Go spend time with your families. Enjoy the beautiful weather, except for Gary, because you guys apparently have really bad weather. Um, but you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me on another Thursday. Um, let's see. I will be back with you next Thursday. I have a video premiering on my YouTube channel tomorrow. That's going to be a really cool look with vinegar. So if you've been curious about using vinegar with your paint, watch my YouTube video tomorrow. It's a really cool look. Um, and I will catch you guys next week. Have a good weekend.